The red heifer remains the most compelling and elusive mystery in the Holy Torah. What does it represent? What is it really all about? There are so many questions. We know that the red heifer is the single, exclusive, universal antidote to the impurity caused by exposure to death, something which has a great ramification, repercussion in the world of the Holy Temple. For in order to actually be able to build the Holy Temple, in order to actually be able to use the sacred vessels that are being created today for use in the divine service, the only thing missing is the ashes of the red heifer. So everybody wants to understand what is the truth about the red heifer. What does it mean? What does it symbolize? How does it work? Ultimately, if you really want to know the truth about the red heifer, if you really want to have all the answers, you can't. Because God tells us that just as he says, no man sees my face and lives, so too, there are things in this world that we can't know. There are things in this world that are bigger than us. You know, today, you can find out anything on Google, and I bet you right now, if you Google the red heifer, you will get tens of thousands of links to things related to the red heifer. But you know what? With all that information, what will you know? You can't hold it here. You can't, you can't have it in this world, because what he's really telling us is that, you know, there's information and then there's knowledge. And the knowledge that the red heifer represents, it's way, way, way beyond our intellectual, emotional, spiritual capacities the way the world is today, because it represents something that is so profound, something that is so godly, there isn't really even room for us to contain it. So today, people have all kinds of questions about the red heifer. Who, what, when, where, why? Some of these questions we can answer, some of them we can't answer, and some of them we won't answer. Do we have a red heifer today? Do we have candidates for the restoration of purity? Can we continue the, the progression towards the rebuilding of the temple by renewing the, <clears throat> the process of purification through the ashes of the red heifer today? Yes, we can. There are red heifers today. This is not the issue. This is not the problem. When the time comes that all of the circumstances that are necessary to be lined up on the same page present themselves, we will be able to usher in a new era of purity and hopefully humility and connection to God and preparedness and readiness to bring the world to a new state of connection to the reality of, of God, the truth of the Jewish experience and the truth of our covenant with the Creator rings true and shines forth from this very precept. It's a precept that is so misunderstood and has been so misappropriated in today's world. It doesn't really go hand in hand with Western values or with the ideas that society has today. So it's a separation and it really serves to refine and define who is willing to take a stand for God and who is willing to admit, I believe in the eternal God, I believe in our covenant with Him, I believe that there are things that are beyond me because I'm not in charge here and I can't know everything, but I know what I don't know and that in its
thank you all. And of course, I want to especially welcome Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump. Your presence here today is a, a testament to the importance of this occasion, not only for the Trump administration, but in a very personal way for you. For you, each of you, for the pursuit of peace, and for President Trump himself. Thank you. <laughs> Dear friends, what a glorious day. Remember this moment. <laughs> this is history. President Trump, by recognizing history, you have made history. So for me, this spot brings back personal memories, but for our people, it evokes profound collective memories of the greatest moments we have known on this city on a hill. In Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, Abram passed the greatest test of faith and the right to be the father of our nation. In Jerusalem, King David established our capital 3,000 years ago. In Jerusalem, King Solomon built our temple, built our temple, built our temple, which stood for many centuries. In Jerusalem, Jewish exiles from Babylon rebuilt the temple, rebuilt the temple, rebuilt the temple, which stood for many more centuries. In Jerusalem, the Maccabees rededicated that temple, rededicated that temple, and restored Jewish sovereignty in this land. And it was here in Jerusalem, some 2,000 years later, that the soldiers of Israel spoke three immortal words, Hal Habayt Biadenu, the Temple Mount is in our hands. The Temple Mount is in our hands, is in our hands. Words that lifted the spirit of the entire nation. We are in Jerusalem and we are here to stay.
Thank you.